week 15 of the fantasy football season and he has top 36 wide receivers i'm ranking this week going into week one of most fantasy playoffs number one tyreek hill of the miami dolphins to hill the best receiver in fantasy football this season i know last week he left the game what an ankle injury early and then returned in the fourth quarter sporadic play but i think this week versus the new york jets after a tough loss hill grinds it out and even versus a tougher team we've seen it early in the season where he had a nice game on black friday Number two, C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys. So C.D. Lamb, it's been a great season for him after critics were calling him out and saying he's not a true number one wide receiver for his team. And over the last six weeks of the season, he's been the best wide receiver, him and Tyreek Hill, neck and neck in terms of yards, in terms of fantasy points. And this week at Buffalo, a secondary that is a little bit leaky and dealing with injuries on and off all season here. I think C.D. Lamb goes out there once again and has a great game because this Cowboy offense is in sync. This West Coast offense and moving C.D. Lamb around has really paid dividends. And we've seen it over the last month and a half of the season. Number three, Justin Jefferson of the Minnesota Vikings. So Jefferson, he left the game getting taking a big hit in the back end, but it ended up being a chest injury. But this week, with their playoff hopes still alive at 7-6, and six, is this Minnesota Viking team. At Cincinnati, a team that puts up points. They're going to need Justin Jefferson. And he's day-to-day -day now, but right now they seem optimistic that Jefferson is going to play. So we know he's a big time wide receiver, one of the best route runners in the league. And just the scheme of this Minnesota offense gets him open. I know it mean Nick Mullins, but in my opinion, it just doesn't matter. He's that good of a receiver. And no matter what, he's going to put up numbers. Number four, A.J. Brown of the Philadelphia Eagles. So A.J. Brown last week, him and Stephon Gilmore, what a face off it was where Brown made some plays, but also had a bad fumble in that game. But this week at Seattle, a young secondary and a lot of set guys in that secondary taking chances for either a big hit like a Jamal Adams or going for the pick six has been this pro their problem. So this week on Monday Night Football, I think A.J. Brown goes out there and he has another big performance. Number five, Amon Ross St. Brown of the Detroit Lions. So St. Brown had one of the worst games of his career and obviously games of the season that he and a tough loss at the Bears. But this week back home where St. Brown in this offense really thrives. Versus the Denver Broncos this week, I think this could be a potential shootout, obviously. St. Brown, one of the best route runners in the league and some of the best hands. Last week, a couple tough balls he could have had, but he did drop them or he would have had a better game, obviously. This week, I think he bounces back and the Lions focus. Once again, number six, Stefan Diggs of the Buffalo Bills. So Stefan Diggs having a solid season once again. I know last week he was bottled up for the most part in that nice victory at the Kansas City Chiefs. But this week versus the Dallas Cowboys, this could be a game where they'll shoot out. You know, you got to put up points versus Cowboy team. And we know their defense has players that ball hawk the football and try to make big plays and create turnovers. So this week, Stefan Diggs, I still think if it's Stefan Gilmore or Deron Bland's going to have a good game. Number seven, Cooper Cup. Of the Los Angeles Rams to Cooper Cup finally had that patented big ball game we've been waiting for for weeks now where Cup finally went over 100 yards versus a good Raven defense and found the end zone in that tough loss in overtime in week 14. So this week a great matchup versus the command is a defense that don't stop anyone. Cooper Cup maybe wasn't 100% even though I know he tweaked the ankle in last week's game. Still this Ram team still has a slim chance of possibly getting in and making the playoffs and Cooper Cup's a gamer. As long as he could go out there and he's physically capable of running and making plays, I still think he has a good ball game. And this command of defense, like I said, is depleted. Number eight, Michael Pittman of the Indianapolis Colts. And Michael Pittman, what a bounce back season it's been for him. And him and Gardner, Gardner Minshew have been on the same page. It seems like he, every week, at least 90 to 100 yards for Michael Pittman. And this week versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, I know. They have a pretty good defense, but we saw last week Juju Smith-Schuster even go for four catches, 90 yards, and Pittman's been a better home player than he's been on the road, so with all those factors, I think it rounds up to a nice game once again. Number nine, Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers, so Brandon Ayuk, it's been a great season for him in this 90 team, where pretty much weekly it seems like he's either finding the end zone or going over 100 yards is Brandon Ayuk. So this week at Arizona, one of the worst defenses in the league in a secondary that hasn't been all that great. I think Brandon Ayuk and this Niner offense go in there once again and dominate. And he puts in a big performance. Number 10 is teammate Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers. So Debo, the last few weeks, he's looked healthy and he's the playmaker we all expect him to be. Backfield, we've seen him line up. We've seen him on jet sweeps. We've seen him break tackles and take it to the house 60, 70 yards a few weeks ago versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And this week at the Arizona Cardinals, I think we're going to see him once again have a big ball game because once Debo's in the open field, pretty much no one's catching him. And right now, 
Kyle Shanahan's getting Debo in the right positions. He's going out there making plays, and he's been an explosive player for fantasy owners over the last three, four weeks. Number 11, Puka Nakoa of the Los Angeles Rams. So when you got him and Cooper Cup on the same team, Matthew Stafford's been going out there and having a field day right now. So Puka Nakoa, one of the best receivers in the league in terms of route running and catching the football. I know he's only a rookie, and it's part of Sean McVay's system as well is why he's having good success. But Puka Nakua, he's going out there making plays, and he's got great hands. Last week, what a grab. It was on a diving ball for him. And versus a weak Washington command, the secondary coming to town over in Los Angeles. I think Puka Nakua, once again, is going to be no match and have a big game. Number 12, Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Mike Evans, it's been a great year. Another year over 1,000 yards already. I know last week, him and Baker Mayfield just going to connect on a few balls because the opportunities were there but just a few balls were on the throne and then one play where Mike Evans' hand just was out of bounds before he got that second foot in for a touchdown so this week I think they iron things out not a great matchup at the Green Bay Packers for Mike Evans it doesn't matter the matchup to me he's pretty much a matchup proof wide receiver and as long as he could get that deep ball and him and Baker get back on the same page I think he bounces back what a big game this week, 13, Jamar Chase of the Cincinnati Bengals. So Jake Browning's been playing great football, no doubt about it, over the last few weeks. But the last two out of three games, Chase really hasn't done much besides that big ball game on Monday Night Football with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So right now, those are the options I've mentioned. The first 12 players ahead of them are more consistent. And guys, pretty much, for the most part this season, have had better years than Jamar Chase. So this week, I know it's a decent matchup versus the Vikings, even though they shut down Devontae Adams in this Raider offense, but Jamar Chase, he could pop off at any time for a big ball game. So this week, he's a borderline number one wide receiver for fantasy owners. Number 14, Keenan Allen of Los Angeles Chargers. So right now, Justin Herbert's going to be out in this game Thursday night. Not a great matchup at the Vegas Raiders. Their defense, believe it or not, has been playing better over the last few weeks. And with Easton Stick in their quarterback, I don't really know what to expect from Keenan Allen. But Keenan Allen, we know, is a great route runner. We know what a bad quarterback, he still could go in there and make some plays and is a PPR machine. And this week at Vegas, I think Keenan Allen is a number two wide receiver for fantasy owners. Still has value and is a decent option this week. Number 15, DJ Moore of the Chicago Bears. So DJ Moore, it's been a great season for him in his first year in Chicago. And him and Justin Fields have a good rapport. Last week, we saw once again more fun in the end zone. And since Fields returned, he's putting up those elite numbers once again. So this week, I know it's a tougher matchup at the Cleveland Browns. One of the better defenses in the league, but we don't know if it's going to be Denzel Ward returning in this game or not. But even on volume and just the way him and Fields have a good rapport, DJ Moore weekly is a number two wide receiver at minimum for fantasy owners. Number 16, Gary Wilson of the New York Jets. So Gary Wilson, what a game it was for him last week. And this Jet offense looked totally different versus the Houston Texans with Zach Wilson returning to the starting lineup. I know it's one game. I'm not going to get overhyped because this is a tougher matchup in Miami, even though we just saw DeAndre Hopkins go off for a big ball game. But Jalen Ramsey most likely will be on Gary Wilson. And this Dolphin team, after taking their foot off the gas in the second half of that ball game versus the Titans, especially the fourth quarter, I think they come in with a rebranded focus in this game versus the New York Jets to make it a little bit tougher for their offense. And Gary Wilson, number 17, Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints. And Chris Olave, it's been a pretty decent season for him. Obviously, he's not putting up the numbers people expected where they took him in the second, late second round the most fantasy draft. So this week, pretty decent matchup versus the New York Giants where you can make plays on that secondary, even though their defense definitely has improved over the last month of the season. But Chris Olave is a pro route runner. Him and Derek Carr have been getting on the same page. And this is a must-win game for this New Orleans Saints team. If they want a chance to win this division or possibly try to sneak in if they can't get the division as a wild card where them and the Giants are right there near each other. Number 18, Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. So DK Metcalf, the last few games here, four touchdowns in the last two, three at the Dallas Cowboys in week 13. And then last week, he started off the game hot, two catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. But after that, he didn't do anything with DK Metcalf. So this week, a matchup versus Philadelphia Eagles. They give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. And Metcalf, I know it was a physical game, and he got tossed in last week's ball game with frustration. So we don't know for sure if it's going to be Drew Locke or Geno Smith at starting quarterback. But either way, DK Metcalf, he's a playmaker. Still one of the better receivers, in my opinion, in the league. And he just has to keep his emotions in check. They focus on the game because if he could do that, DK Metcalf, honestly, it's guys the limit. Number 19 staying in this game game. Devonta Smith 
of the Philadelphia Eagles for this week here matchup at the Seattle Seahawks where I think they could take advantage of this young secondary Jamal Adams he can't cover anyone in space when it's one and one when it gets to the safety help and we've seen it over the last few weeks with Jake Ferguson in week 13 and then last week he got burned by Debo Samuel so this week Devonta Smith and this Eagle offense they want to get back on track we know Smith's a big time playmaker last week I know some struggles dropping passes and fumbling but this week I think he bounces back with a good game number 20 Devonte Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders Devonte Adams this season's definitely been a disappointment and I think in the offseason he is going to get traded away is Devontae Adams. So him and Aiden O'Connell, they've had a decent rapport this season, but really Devontae Adams isn't putting up those elite numbers like we've seen from him for many seasons. So this week it is a decent matchup versus the Los Angeles Chargers. But like I said, Aiden O'Connell, I don't know what he's really going to do out there versus Charger defense. This could be a tough game to watch on Thursday night with Easton Stick and O'Connell going at it. Number 21, Jalen Waddle of the Miami Dolphins. And Jalen Waddle, one of his better games of the season was versus the New York Jets on Black Friday, going over 100 yards in that ball game. So with Jalen Waddle, he got nicked up a little bit in that tough loss in week 14 versus the Tennessee Titans. But he returned in that game and finished with 13.90 fantasy points in PPR leagues. So this week, yeah, I know it's a tougher matchup versus the New York Jets. But like I said, one of his best games versus one of the tougher defenses in the league. He went out there and put in a solid performance. And obviously, if Tyreek Hill does miss this game, which I don't think he will, more targets will come and more fantasy points to Jalen Waddle. Number 22, Nico Collins of the Houston Texans. So Nico Collins, he left that game and was ruled out immediately in that one at the New York Jets. But they definitely need Nico Collins. And if they go into this game without CJ Stroud, which I don't think Stroud's going to play still in the concussion protocol, and Nico Collins. It's going to be a tough one for them at Tennessee. So Nico Collins, it's been a breakout season for him, no doubt about it. Obviously, his value takes a hit if he does play, and Davis Mills is in there quarterback, but he's the number one wide receiver on this Texan team, and this Tennessee secondary just isn't good. We've seen it week in and week out. They give up a lot of fantasy points to receivers on the year. 23, Rasheed Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. So this week, a great matchup at the New England Patriots here for Rishi Rice and this Chief team. So this Chief team, I think this is going to be one of the better games of the season. They're due to have a monster game where they score 45, 50 points in a matchup. And it definitely could happen after coming off a tough loss in the way they went down in the tiny offsides after hitting on a big play that would have gave them the lead. So anyway, Rishi Rice, the number one wide receiver, easily in this offense. Tani's not doing much. Valdez can't win Sky Moore. And he's the only guy besides, obviously, Travis Kelsey in the passing game that Mahomes counts on and has confidence in. 24, Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos. So Sutton, the last couple seasons, injuries have held him back, but this season he's the number one target in this Denver offense. And I know he don't catch a lot of footballs, but he does put up decent fantasy points. He has found the end zone a lot. And last week, what a grab it was in the back of the end zone, getting one of his arms pulled and still coming down with the touchdown. So this week in a potential shootout in Detroit where their secondary really hasn't been that good over the last month of the season. I think Corwin Sutton's a perfect two wide receiver for fancy owners this week. 25, Amari Cooper of the Cleveland Browns. So Amari Cooper and Joe Flacco, they got on the same page a little bit last week. Cooper finishing with 12 fantasy points in PPR leagues. And this week, a good matchup versus the Chicago Bears, a secondary that's had trouble all season making stops. So Joe Flacco, he's their best option at quarterback. He's driving that football down the field way better than a P.J. Walker or Demarius Thompson Robinson. And Amari Cooper is still one of the best route runners in the league, and he's had way better success at home throughout his career than he has on the road. 26, DeAndre Hopkins of the Tennessee Titans. So DeAndre Hopkins, it seems like he's an every other week type of fantasy option after coming off a monster ball game with some big catches down the stretch in that victory at the Miami Dolphins, DeAndre Hopkins, him and Will Levis have a good rapport. We know they were arguing a few weeks ago in that game, but they got back on track in this one in Miami and had a big performance in Week 14. So right here in a potential shootout possibly between two division rivals in the Houston Texans and this Tennessee Titans team. I think Hopkins versus former team, he's going to have the juices flowing. Obviously started his career with Houston, then went to Arizona. And him and Will Levis, if they're on the same page, Hopkins, he could pay big dividends for fantasy owners. Down the stretch, 27 title Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. I believe it or not, Lockett had one of his best games of the year last week versus a tough San Francisco defense. And with Drew Locke in there at quarterback. So we don't know this week if it's going to be Geno Smith or Drew Locke on the center for this Seattle Seahawks team. Monday Night Football, so obviously it's going to pile them down to a game time call. And we know Philly secondary 
gives up the most fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. So Tyler Lockett, we know he's a speedster. We know he's had many thousand yard wide receiving years under his belt. And this week versus Philadelphia, if they want to have a chance to win this ball game, they're going to have to stretch the field and try to beat them in the passing game. 28 Zay Flowers of the Baltimore Ravens. So Zay Flowers, he was off to a slow start early in last week's game. And then second half, he got things going and found the end zone. So this week here, Sunday Night Football, potential shootout with them and the Jacksonville Jaguars, two teams amongst the league leaders in the AFC, AFC here. Zay Flowers is a good route runner. They've used them in gadget type of role as well. And he's getting more targets since Mark Andrews been out. So this week is a number two low-end receiver flex option. I think he can help fantasy owners. 29 T. Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals. So T. Higgins last week, he didn't do much, but he did have two catches for 72 yards. So Jake Browning, he's not afraid to throw the football down the field and stretch the field. That's what we've seen from him so far in his first three starts with the Cincinnati Bengals team. And this week, it's a pretty decent matchup versus Minnesota. I know last week they went in there, shut out the Vegas Raiders, but this Bengals offense is still high-powered, even with Jake Browning, a quarterback, taking the place of Joe Burrow out for the season. So T. Higgins, we know he's not been 100% this season. We know he hasn't played well, but this week versus Minnesota, I think he could be a decent option for fantasy owners. Number 30, Calvin Ridley. Of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Calvin Ridley, it's been an up and down first season back after suspended all last season for him with this Jacksonville Jaguar team. So this week, a tougher matchup versus the Baltimore Ravens. They got a good secondary and one of the better defenses, believe it or not, in the league. But Calvin Ridley, the number one wide receiver. Christian Kirk, we know he's out multiple weeks with the core injury. And it's pretty much him and Evan Ingram, the top two targets in this passing game with Zay Jones making a few plays here and there. And the six-round rookie Parker Washington, number 31, Drake London of the Atlanta Falcons. So London, there's weeks he has a monster game, and then weeks where he don't do nothing. So last week was a monster game for Drake London. And believe it or not, on paper, this isn't that great of a matchup. The Panthers give up the fifth least amount of fantasy points to wideouts on the season. But to running backs, they've had field days all season versus them. So London, we know he's a big play wide receiver. But the problem with him, obviously, is the quarterback. And just the offense they run over there. So Atlanta's going to run first team. Carolina doesn't stop the run. And I think in this game, they're going to run the football a whole lot and grind it out. But I still think London could put in serviceable numbers. But I don't see him going over 100 yards once again this week. 32, Adam Thielen of the Carolina Panthers. Adam Thielen, he got off to a roaring start the first five, six weeks of the year. Then he slowed down a little. In the last few weeks, his numbers have been mediocre as a three, four wide receiver for fantasy owners. So this week here versus Atlanta, where their secondary definitely is beatable. Even though Adam Thielen is ceiling really hasn't been high the last few weeks here, where he's pretty much topped off 13, 15 fantasy points at most. Like I said, teams are taking out Adam Thielen. They're trying to have Jonathan Mingo, DJ Chark try to beat him. And that really hasn't happened well for this Panther team. And I expect the land is going to run the same game plan. 33, Deontay Johnson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Deontay Johnson, he has found the end zone the last two weeks here. But if he's not finding the end zone, he's not really putting up fantasy numbers for the Steelers team. And him and Mike Tomlin, they've had a little rift and guys in the locker room with Deontay Johnson not hustling and playing hard, they believe, over the last few weeks. And how could a guy really have confidence and will be determined when you're playing with quarterbacks like Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky? I know he has to go out there and do his job, but his ceiling has been low. And this offense just can't really move the football. I know it's a decent matchup in Indianapolis, but he's a low-end three flex option. 34 Odell Beckham of the Baltimore Ravens. Odell Beckham, he's starting to break out over the last month of the season. But the thing with him is he's not really getting a lot of volume as Beckham. It's pretty much been three, four catch ball games with 50, 60 yards and finding the end zone he's topping out at. So this week in a potential shootout, no doubt about it, at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Odell Beckham, once again, could be a decent option for fantasy owners. But another side of it, I just don't trust them full throttle all the way here going into the playoffs for fantasy owners because there could be a game where Beckham gets four points or a game where he gets 20 points. So we don't know what we're going to get from him week in and week out, but he's definitely on the radar now. 35, Terry McLaurin of the Washington Commanders. So definitely this season, you thought McLaurin's numbers will be better where he's playing with a quarterback who's pretty decent in Sam Howell this season amongst the league leaders in passing yards. So McLaurin three games in a row where he's failed to reach double digits. And this week, I know it's a decent matchup at the Los Angeles Rams, but he's another wide receiver that's tough to trust. I know McLaurin's the number one over there. I know he's a big time playmaker, one of the most underrated receivers in the league. But the last few weeks, him and Howell haven't been hitting. And Howell's a quarterback that spreads the football out 
as well in the 36th and final wideout on rankings. Hollywood Brown of the Arizona Cardinals. So Hollywood Brown, it's been an up and down type of season for him. Believe it or not, he's played better with Joshua Dobbs when he was there with the Arizona Cardinals early in the season. And besides that, with Kyla Murray, he's only had one good game. So Brown, obviously not 100%, but still a good route runner, still a good deep ball threat. But with his numbers not consistent this season, over the last few weeks, especially in a tough matchup versus San Francisco, he's nothing more than a low-end flex option. So that's the top 36 wide receivers I'm ranking for week 15 of the fantasy football season.